G'day guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back for episode 13 of Wasteland Survival. So, in the last episode we finished off the episode by basically projecting the blueprint for the Nomad into the garage. So this episode is mainly going to focus on completing that blueprint and getting that welded up. Now, there's two things I wanted to go over before I actually started the episode. So the first thing is obviously you might notice that my voice is a little bit different and that's because I currently have the flu so yeah there is that uh, the second thing is that in the last episode I accidentally set the gain for my microphone to a fair bit louder than what it was before so it was picking up, picking up quite a bit of the keyboard noise and my voice was extremely loud as opposed to kind of like the game volume so yeah, there is that, um, but hopefully that should be a fair bit better in this episode. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I kind of want to go over is how I'm going to weld this thing up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a printer. So I decided to do a printer just because I think trying to weld this up with a welding ship is going to be a little bit too tedious and the other thing is that there's two types of printers I can basically use I can kind of create a rotary printer which will be a lot better on PCU but you know since this is a survival world and I'm not running on a server I don't really need to worry about PCU for any other reason but the fact that it you know slows the game down then I don't really need to worry about that too much so I think what I'm going to do instead is just go for a welding wall um, and what I will do is I will space each welder in between each other with a block um, with a conveyor uh, so basically the welders are going to be in kind of like a cross hatch pattern. Now this particular blueprint is 32 blocks long so if we times that number by 2.5 we end up at somewhere around 80 meters so with the reach of each particular piston being 10 meters that means that we need about eight pistons to get to the end of this projection but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this um, printer nine pistons long just so that we have a little bit of a margin of error. Now the second thing is that you might notice that these suspension components are very close to the ground. So I'm not actually sure if I can weld up these suspension components and add wheels to them given how close they are to the ground. So I may end up having to raise the blueprint up by one block, but I think I might even just have to test that. So I guess what I can do now is I can withdraw a whole bunch of components from, for some steel plates. So let's do that now. And what I'll do is I will just try and place this suspension. And then from there I'll try and place a wheel down and we'll see if we're actually able to place a wheel. So let's just quickly weld up these. I just I don't even really need to weld them up I just need to kind of place the wire frames and then from there I can weld up this block and yeah you can see that it says that the wheel cannot be placed so I do think that I'm going to have to raise this up by one block I guess the other method that I could do is I could get away with basically leaving it where it is I could use these jacking pistons here to basically cover the distance and then raise the blueprint up but I think it's just going to be a lot easier for us if we just kind of you know yeah just raise it up one using the projector and I think I'm also going to have to space it out from the wall a little bit and the only problem is I haven't really built myself any access to some fuel so Oh, yep, cool. Well, that was a bit of a lucky thing. So let me just quickly get some fuel here for my jetpack. All right, cool. So I got some fuel. All right, now let's go ahead and let's move this projector, or this blueprint rather, forward by about, I don't know, five or six blocks. And we'll just 
see how we're going from there. Okay, well that's moved forward a few blocks. So now I think we should have room to build our printer. So let's make sure that everything in this connector is emptied. So let's find our large cargo container with all of our items into it. And from there, let's basically move everything across. And I'll just empty all these connectors as well because why not? Yep, all right, that looks good. So let's grind this connector away. And now we can start building our printer. So I'll turn my lights on here just so I can see what I'm doing. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start the printer from here. So I'll place another conveyor there. Uh, the only problem is I kind of need somewhere where I can access a whole bunch of cargo. So maybe instead what I can do is I'll place my connector back just for the time being. And then that will allow me to withdraw components. Let's withdraw the components for a small cargo container. So then I'll place one there. And this can be the start of our printer. So now that I have that there, I can actually withdraw the components that I need. I didn't really think about that one properly, did I? So from here, what I'll need to do is place a conveyor tube, which I will withdraw a fair few of them. So I can place a conveyor tube there. Then what I'll do is I'll place my piston. So we'll get our piston and we'll place that there of which I need to withdraw components for that. But instead what I'll do is I'll just withdraw a whole bunch of steel plates and then that should allow me to place all the pistons that I want. So I'm not actually going to weld these up for now, but I'm basically just going to figure out the frame of what I'm going to build here. So then what I need to do is basically place a curved conveyor tube like that and then like that and what I can do is I can place a piston backwards here. I don't normally do that, but maybe I can do that in this instance. Now, you know what, I'll just go the normal way I do and just have all the pistons going in the one direction. So then what I'll do is I'll place another curved conveyor this way, like that, and then another one like that, and then we can grab another piston we can place another piston there like that and then we can just kind of repeat this process until we have enough pistons um, as I said before I'm going to need about nine and what I eventually want to happen is I want the last piston to kind of end up here in the middle so that when I go to place my welding wall then the piston at the end ends up in the middle somewhere so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this off camera and then I'll see you in a second. All right, guys. Well, as you can see, I have placed all my pistons. Uh, it isn't as neat as what I wanted, but you know, it's going to kind of be a temporary structure. So it doesn't really matter how ugly it is or it isn't. So one thing that I didn't mention before was when you're going through and you're actually doing this it's kind of a good idea to name each piston as you place it so that you know which one's which so basically this is going to be my piston one and then which leads to a conveyor tube which then leads to another one and that will be my piston number two this will be piston number three number four number five number six number seven number eight and number nine so I did originally want it to come out there but that's all right this will kind of do and I did actually try and place pistons going the opposite direction but for some reason they didn't seem to want to place the piston head so I think they may have interfered with each other so yeah this is kind of going to be the only way I've got to go 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld all this up and once that's done I will see you in a second. Alright guys, well that is the last piston welded up. So as you can see all my conveyors are nice and green and it looks like everything will work rather nicely. So if we go into the control panel and hmm, let's go into this control panel then. Now let's search for our pistons and you can see we have piston 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Magic. Okay, so now what we need to do is just add a tube to this and then from there I can start creating my weld wall. So I'm basically going to put one tube there and then on the end of that I'm going to place a single conveyor so I'll place it like this just because I'm OCD and let's weld both of these up right now that both of these are welded up what I'm going to do is start placing my welders so basically my welders are going to be like this with the conveyors on the side not a grinder a welder yep that's the right block so there's going to be one there like that and then one there like that and then I'm going to have another conveyor and so on and so forth and then on top of that I'll have another welder there and then I'll have another welder there and then there I'll have a conveyor and yeah so basically there's going to be a block spacing in between all of these welders so I think what I'm going to do actually though is I'm going to modify my hotbar just so I don't have to keep switching between hotbars all the time and I'm actually going to add a conveyor directly to this so let's just do that alright so let's place a conveyor there another one there, another one there and another one there and how low do I need to go with this thing well as I said before what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to raise this blueprint by one so let's just do that let's raise the blueprint by one so vertical offset make that 12 now what you'll also notice though is that these gatling turrets are probably going to start interfering with the roof but i think what i'm going to do is i'm just not going to worry about welding them up for the time being and then once i drive it out of the garage then i'll weld them up and then or once i drop it onto the floor then i'll weld weld it up so I think what I need to do now is kind of make it maybe only one block lower than what it is now so I could probably get away with just placing my conveyor there and then having my what am I doing I just put these on here so I didn't have to do this so let's do that number nine another number nine there and then that's looking pretty good so I think from there that will actually be enough to weld everything up so let me just place another welder there and another welder there and then I think that should be enough and then from there what I can do is I can grab my blocks so we'll just grab some light armor blocks and we'll just place like kind of a layer down on the bottom here and then from there I can create a wheel suspension on this side and I think I'll try and put a 3x3 three three here and let's just see if it will allow me to place the wheel yep fantastic alright so I'll do the same for the other side awesome and then that will allow me to keep this all stable and then what I'll do is I'll actually expand the welding wall out on the top here so it will kind of be like a t-shaped welding wall not just like a, a brick square kind of deal so yeah I think that's gonna work pretty well so let's see what happens when I grab the components for one of these welders and we'll see if this thing will self-weld itself. And 
I'm hoping that it will. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So let's just weld this one welder up. And then let's go into our inventory. Go to the control panel. We'll select all of our welders. And we'll turn all of them on. And no, it doesn't look like it's going to do that for us. So that is a bit of a shame, but... Oh well. I guess it is what it is. So draw all these components and weld up this one and that one's not going to weld up any other blocks beside it either so that should all be connected though so conveyor yep conveyor welder with its port on the side hmm that is a bit strange but what do you do all right well I'm probably going to finish a lot of this off camera well actually no you know what Let's um, let's place all of the welders and let's build the weld ball and then I will kind of probably weld it up off camera. So at least we can kind of get a better idea of what we're doing. So for these I need steel plates. And I think for the conveyors I just need interior plates. So number nine. Yeah, just interior plates. Alright, so there. There. And then there and there is where I'll have my conveyors. Oh, not there. Right. I can never find things on this hotbar. Even though they're in the same position in every save, or at least I try to make them in, in the same position in every save, I still have trouble, trouble finding them. Right, so at this point, do we need to start branching out? Yeah, I think we do. So I think at this point, or maybe it's, yeah. So I think at this point what I'm going to do is start placing some more welders. So I probably need to go out, and maybe what I'll do here is I will actually place just straight welders at that point. So let's do the same on this side. Place a conveyor there, then I'll grab another welder place three in a row and then from there I'll place another one there and then we'll go back to kind of like the crosshatch pattern so then I'll just keep placing conveyors like this until we get to the last one I keep selecting the wrong things place them all like that awesome and then, yeah, from here I think I can just kind of get away with creating a crosshatch pattern. But I think the outer edge will just have to be straight up welders. And I can just do a crosshatch pattern in the middle of that. Fuel low. So, oh no. Ooh. Fuel critical. Alright, let's see if I can... Oh. Can I jump down there? Hmm. Let's go this way. Huh. Nice. Very nice. That was close. Alright, let's fuel up here. And I'll leave this part in because even I make mistakes sometimes. Hey! What happened there? I filled up my tanks. Why did I fall to the ground? Uh, oh, at least I know that if I fall from this height I won't die, even though the gravity on this planet is pretty extreme. So, yeah, I don't know what that's about. Alright, let's finish building this wall. And from there we can build these ones here. Like that and now should just be able to build all my welders there and then there like that awesome all right so what I'll do though is I'll just kind of weld this up Add 
this one. And did I add this one? I don't think I did, but now it's added. So we'll weld up all of these. Okay. Well, that's all of those welded up. And I think what I'll do is I'll just place down a temporary little control panel here. So let's just place it there, I guess. Just so that it's on like the same grid. Okay, that's welded up. Now, let's go into here and let's just check our wheel settings. So what I'll do is I will remove any steering. I will remove any power, the strength I will probably increase up to about 16, um, height offset, what, do we, what have we got here, so I'll put them down until they kind of lift everything up, so I think, seems like that is about 58, yep, yeah, there we go, um, was well, just 580 what am I doing friction I'll set to zero speed limit uh, I think we'll just leave it like that all right now let me go into the control panel via the antenna and let's select all of our pistons and then let's reverse them all so but before I do that I'll set it to 0 0.3 for the speed and then I will reverse it and then it should go rather nicely straight ahead um, maybe I will have to turn up the friction on those wheels so they don't just kind of glide along the floor like that and look weird hmm that's interesting and hopefully I've calculated this right and this will actually reach the end which it seems like it does with plenty of room. Awesome. Alright, cool. Well, I'm going to retract all this and I'm going to weld this up and then from there I will be back. Alright, well, it is finally complete. I've been at it for at least an hour or so um, and I actually mistakenly replaced some of these welders with grinders because I realized at some point I had just welders on top of welders instead of the crosshatch pattern so yeah I've had to re-weld this thing a couple of times and then mess around with it um, also what I've done is I've gone into the console and I've actually named each welder so you can see that this welder you know is number 12 and so on and so forth and I've also created a group for all of these welders so that we will use that a little bit later on second thing I've done is I've enabled share inertia tensor on every single piston except for this one which is piston number one so that just helps make everything a little bit more stable the other thing that I've done is I've also changed the friction of the wheels to 45 percent and I've turned off propulsion and I've turned off another thing I can't remember which one that was so now it's time to fully extend these pistons and then from there we can Energy kind of low. set everything else up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to remote access we'll find our pistons and we'll just reverse these so now you'll see this will drive out nicely and you can see it's really nice and stable now it doesn't you know kind of jolt around and carry on like it was before so yeah I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out and it looks like everything is at the perfect level and it will work quite well in fact I could probably even get rid of these welders on the corner here but before we start creating a control seat to control these welders and doing all that sort of stuff there is one thing I need to do so the other thing that I need to do so what I'll do is I'll just quickly go back here and I'll deposit all my components and I'll withdraw a whole bunch of conveyors and conveyor junctions 
just for now I'll do a whole bunch of conveyors. And if you can kind of imagine on the side of these welders is a port but on top of these welders is a is no port so if this conveyor sits underneath this welder then they're not all these rows aren't actually connected together so what I need to do is I actually need to grab a tube and I need to run a tube like that across all of these layers so we need to kind of go like this now as I said I could use conveyors for this kind of purpose but what I'll do is I'll just use tubes so place all of those and then we'll weld all of those up and I could place another level there but I don't think I will I think this should be sufficient enough hmm yeah you know what maybe just to make it kind of the same on both sides I will do that so we'll just place some there so now that will mean that all these layers are kind of connected together so let me quickly weld these up all right well that's everything welded up so now we can get started on actually building this rover so the first thing I need to do is actually place down a seat much like what we did before so I think to get a decent view on this whole project I may even just create a control seat hanging off the wall here I know it's a little bit weird but I think that's probably gonna be the best way to go so let me just weld a random control seat here so let's select a control seat and for this I will use a flight seat because as I said before you kind of get a better view with a control seat so we'll place one here like that and then let's just weld that up right let's jump into the control seat and here you can see that we have a pretty good view of what's going on so what I'm going to do is I'll put my console back on so I'll select my pistons so let's select pr uh, printer piston number one and we will decrease the minimum distance and then we will do the same for this one decrease minimum distance and then we'll do the same for every single piston in in line okay so that's all the pistons set to decrease minimum distance now what I need to do is go into the control panel select all the pistons and then I need to set the minimum distance of these pistons to 10 meters and then I will re reverse them so then that means that the pistons are going that way so then when I decrease the distance of say number 9 you can see that they move back so that's all well and good now what we need to do is set up our group for our welders so we should be able to find some welders here and we have our weld wall welders and we'll toggle these blocks on and off so then if we exit out of that press number one then all of our welders should now turn on so let's just make sure that they are and yeah as you can see all of the welders are turned on now what i need to do is kind of figure out where i'm going to weld my first block to pin this blueprint down so usually I go by the first block here so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the control panel here and I'm going to reduce the distance of this by quite a bit so each time you press the button it basically reduces the distance by 0.5 meters as I explained in the episode when I was printing the other um, small grid ships so I'm going to reduce the distance of this by another four that should be roughly one block and then it looks like I need to go another two blocks so I need to go about ten okay so that should hopefully end up on the far edge 
And then I probably need to go one block more. So let's see where we end up. Hmm. Maybe I need to go even one more block than that. Alright, well let's do that again. Okay. So now we're about one block away from the last block. So let's exit out of the control seat and just see where we're at. So yeah, as you can see, that last block there is right next to those welders. So what I can do is I can now start placing down my blocks. So we need to place our blocks kind of here. And our weld will go ahead and weld all these up for us. Fuel low. And of course our fuel is low again. Fuel Let me critical. just fill up quickly here. And then I'll be back. Alright. Now I should have enough fuel for a while. I actually added an extra bottle to my inventory just because it's getting annoying having to go back and forth every 10 seconds. So now the other thing I need to do is just make sure that I actually have enough materials to build this thing. So let's just go into our inventory here and let's see what I have in my large cargo container. So I don't have many large steel tubes. I've only got about a thousand. So what I think I'll do is I'll just produce a few thousand of these, a few thousand of them, a few more thousand steel plates, a few more thousand of those. I'll need at least 2,000, mm, maybe not 2,000 metal grids, but oh, well, we'll build them anyway. I'll just build, yeah, so I guess I'll just build 5,000 of everything. And then, do I need 1,000 detector components? Probably not. Probably only a couple of hundred. Then maybe a hundred of those, and then maybe about three or four hundred. Uh, we'll go with 600 of those, um, and then probably about 5,000 motors as well. So it looks like I have a fair bit of stuff to build. So let's see, 111,000 iron, 12,000 nickel. Let's just see if I actually have that. So... It looks like I may need to go and mine some more iron. Um, how much nickel do I have? Really, is that it? Alright, cool. So it looks like I need to get another 12,000 nickel. Um, cobalt, I should have plenty of. And then silicon, I've got heaps of that. So, alright, cool. So, we're going to have to do a mining trip. Alright, let's jump back into the miner and let's go do a mining trip. So, first thing I need to grab is nickel. Let's turn my HUD back on. And then I need to grab myself a whole bunch of iron. Alright, well we've gotten ourselves to the nickel mine. Now, if I remember correctly, the last time I used this mine was with the other ships, so this one is going to be a bit of a tight squeeze trying to get through, so I'm going to have to clear myself a bit of a bigger path here. So I'll just right click drill my way down. I'll just kind of go from there. Alright, cool. We have reached the deposits. Alright, well let me mine this out. Alright, well that should be enough nickel, so as you can see I've dug myself quite a big tunnel here. Alright, so let's exit out of the mine. Uh, I will change my camera view here to the top, and then we'll try and exit out of here without bumping into anything. I think I'll make myself just a little bit of a bigger hole. Awesome, alright cool. So now we'll head back to base with all of this. 
And then after that, we need to go and mine some iron. Alright, well, we're back at base. So now I should have enough nickel to finish what I want to build. Usually, you don't really need to mine too much nickel. And I think in this one trip, I should be able to get myself around about a thousand. So let's just make sure that all of our refineries kick in. Yeah, so you can see that they all do. And we're refining an absolute boatload of nickel. Very nice. All right, so let's just make sure that the ship is empty. And yes, it is. And now we can do a trip for some iron. Alright, well we have arrived at the iron mine. But one thing kind of caught my eye. So you can see down there that there must be a wreck of some kind. So I might check that out in a minute. I probably won't go too close to it just in case it has any active guns. So that would kind of be unfortunate if I died because there was some inactive guns and I lost my mining ship. You know, I probably do actually have enough components to build another one, but still, it wouldn't exactly be great. So let me just mine some of this and yeah, we'll go from there. All right, well, I got about as much iron as I can carry. So let's head on back to base and then maybe we can check out that wreck that's over there. So going to be a little bit heavy, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go directly over this hill and not get too close to that wreck because as I said before, there may actually be some guns still active on that wreck. So I don't really want to get too close to them. Maybe we can get our hands on a little bit of uranium as well. That would be nice. Alright, well, I'm back at base. Oof. Whilst I almost crash. And now we should have enough iron to actually finish this project. So let's just lock ourselves up. Alright, now let's exit this and let's pull out the rifle and let's go and have a look. So I've got three bottles on me, which should be plenty. So let's go and check out this wreck. And it is obviously near this iron main too. So there it is there. So if that is one kilometer away from us, then I, I would say that that is about the same distance as that is from us right now. So if I edge towards the 800 meter mark, then these things might start firing at us. So let's see here. Is there any guns here? Whoop, yep. There is definitely some guns. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer here and maybe take them out. I only have 86 bullets, so where is that gun? There it is. Well, I'm out of ammo, and that gun is about to kill me. Alright, I am out of here. Damn. That is... That really sucks. <sighs> and, you know, I have really tried to find a whole bunch of magnesium offline so that I can kind of refill my ammunition. But, yeah, I just... I don't have any... Um, deposits around me so there's not really much I can do about that so I think once I get this rover online 
That's probably one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go on the hunt for some magnesium and then hopefully from there we should be good to go. So what I'll do is just check on my production here. So it looks like we are lacking in iron. Uh, let me just confirm that. Yep, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move some iron over to the front so that that gets refined first because the nickel is going to take forever by the looks of it. Um, well, let's place this into another refinery. Let's get this one and place it in this refinery. Let's just do another search for iron. Then we'll bring up all of our refineries. So we'll make sure that all of it is sitting in refineries, which it is. Alright, cool. So now that should mean that everything is starting to get produced again. And it is. But what I think I'll do is I'll place the metal grids last because that's probably a component I'm going to need last. Um, I'll probably need the batteries first because the batteries for the rover are at the front. And the motors will need for the um, for the atmospheric thrusters, and they are somewhere in the middle. And obviously, we'll need them for a couple of other things as well. But yeah, I think yep, that should be the order that I need to go in. All right. So once all this stuff is produced, then I'll be back. Alright guys, well, it seems like I have built all the components that I need to, um, but it seems that I've left a few components out, so obviously I didn't build any girders, any displays, or any glass. So basically I've gone ahead and I've built all that stuff, so I think we're good to go. But one other thing I think I need to address is the fact that the middle of this world wall isn't actually going to reach the top of the rover so probably just going to have to build another level of welders and conveyors just along this level so I'll quickly just go and do that and yeah once it's done we'll be back all right well finally we're done with this weld wall so now we can start printing this thing off uh, while I was off camera as well I actually went for a bit of a hunt for some magnesium just so that I could try and investigate that wreck a little bit more but yeah I must have searched for about 30 or 40 different deposits and none of them seem to have anything remotely close to magnesium um, in fact I couldn't even find any gold silver and uh, yeah basically the only thing I could find was maybe a tiny bit of cobalt but mostly iron nickel and silicon so yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and let's get started with this printing. So obviously, as I said before, we're going to move the printer back f uh, by pressing the button five times. So we'll just do that now. And then the next layer should be built. Awesome. So we'll just repeat that process again. We'll turn this off. And as you can see, the next layer is built. And yeah, this process is quite repetitive, but yeah, you can kind of get the idea. I think at this point, that's the maximum range or kind of like the maximum extent for that piston there. So you can see that number eight has been zeroed out. So yeah, now we'll reduce the distance for number seven and then we'll kind of just go from there. So do that five times as well and then we'll weld the next layer and then we'll just continue this process and yeah we'll weld this thing up so I will probably end up doing a fair bit of this off camera because you know it's, it's kind of a repetitive repetitive process so yeah we'll kind of go from this point but as you can see this process isn't exactly bulletproof um, because there are a few blocks that got missed so we will have to weld up a couple of things manually unfortunately even though we have all the components for what we need so 
let's hope that there isn't too much that doesn't get welded up and everything kind of does so yeah let's uh, see how we go with the next layer alright so that's layers done then we'll do the next layer And as you can see, that was a pretty large layer, so it seems that things are still being welded up here. And yeah, the rover's looking pretty good at this point. And let's just have a quick peek inside to make sure everything is being built. And it looks like it is. Cool, so I think we're doing pretty well. So now we're just going to wait until the next layer is built. Except I may, at this point, just put couple of steel a couple of blocks here just so that these get welded up so let's place another one there and then awesome so then hopefully all the other stuff gets built as well I'm not sure what they're actually welding up though. It's a bit weird. Alright, well move it one back move it back one more layer and then we'll see how we go from there. I'll tell you what, this thoroughly beats building this by hand. helping hand. Okay, awesome. That seems like it's not welded up. Too far from the welder. Alright, well, this process is going to get pretty repetitive, so I'm going to finish all of this off camera, and once this thing is done, then I'll be back, and I'll tell you how well it actually went. Alright, I'll see you then. Alright guys, well, you can see that I have printed another couple layers and I thought now since some of the doors had been printed it was probably a good idea to go inside and just check on the progress of the build. So what I'm going to do is just head on inside and make sure that everything is being welded up. So you can see that the sensors are working quite nicely. Sometimes when I do blueprints the sensors don't actually work properly but this time around they seem to be working quite nicely so let's go on inside and just have a quick look and it looks like everything here is being welded up pretty nicely the batteries are charging up um, and there should be a whole bunch of batteries here as well and there is now it looks like these railings haven't been welded up and I assume because they're joined to these railings here and so on and so forth and it looks like this isn't welded up either so probably going to have to manufacture some more uh, medical components so let's just see what we've got here so let's go into our production and do another couple of them then you should see that they will start getting welded up One more. There we go. Awesome. I can charge my batteries from here as well. Alright, so now I just need to withdraw components for this, which I don't actually have on me at the moment. And then I'll just quickly weld those up. To make sure I added both of these to my build planner. There we go. Alright, now that's added. Let's make sure that all this is done. Yep. That's all done. And I imagine it will be the same on the other side as well. And yes, it is. So, let's head on back out of the rover. And those railings are small enough where I think I'll just kind of leave them till later. Alright, well, I'll go away and I'll keep printing this thing out. And then, yeah, I'll be back in a sec. We 
we can kind of see that another layer is being printed so now I'm going to just take the opportunity to have a bit of a look around and just make sure everything is being welded up properly so I took the liberty of actually welding up these railings and I also done these sensors which weren't done before um, and then I think that was about it I think the only other thing that hasn't been welded up is one of these cryo chambers down here which is this one here so I just need three medical components for that and then I can complete that so and then if we go back here and we just have a look we can see that our speed module or our yield module for the refinery is starting to be built and yeah everything looks like it's being built pretty well so no issues there I actually ran out of um, construction components at one point so I had to go and manufacture another 10,000 of those Ooh, getting attacked by the welder there so yeah all right well I guess I'll just continue welding this up off camera actually maybe I can do a couple of layers on camera and just kind of see how this goes so that's another layer there so that should be another layer built whoops I don't think I went back far enough I think I've got to go back one more so there we go right, now I should do another layer awesome although for some reason it's not doing these Gatling turrets so I don't know what the go is with that maybe there are I think they're actually too close to these so yeah no that's that's fine all right cool let's do another layer and you can kind of see that the wheels aren't being built um, that's just because the welders are too close to them so oh, I mean I can just do those by hand so that doesn't really matter too much so that should be another layer there we go alright now let's just do a bit of an inventory of the materials that I have so go into my large cargo container just make sure I've got enough steel plates I have enough construction components I've got enough of everything I think to get this thing done alright well let's do another layer and then see how we go with that so that should be another layer again and I think I may need to actually build some reactor components because I don't think I have any of those left so let's build where are they? there they are so I'll just build a whole bunch of them because this thing actually needs some reactors as well so let's go back one more one more layer and then from there yep, you can see that it says wheel could not be placed and that's fine like I said before I'll just kind of weld them up manually so let's actually just go into the rover and I want to see how these how this refinery is going so um, I can't get to it from there so maybe go this way let's just go down here let's go this way oh, awesome so there's the assembler and yeah the refinery is completely built although these catwalks aren't oh no lightning alright guys I am going to get out of this rover ASAP because I don't want any of this being damaged so I think what I need to do is get back into my seat and get this printed off as quickly as possible because if the printer gets hit um, and especially on that one conveyor that connects it to the rest of the pistons then I'm in big trouble uh, so let's try and get this done before that happens uh, that should be one more layer done 
Let's just double check what sort of components we have left. We have enough steel plates. Um, I think we do. Alright, cool. It looks like it's targeting me, so... I might... Turn off my antenna here. Let's see if that makes a difference. See if it makes makes it so that the lightning no longer targets me. <sighs> Wishful thinking, perhaps. Oh, looks like the storm stopped already. Well, that's kind of good news. I hope. All right, so that should be the final layer printed. Um, I have retracted this back as far as I can and to be honest I probably should have gone one block further forward. Alright, cool. Well, let's start adding all the wheels. So, let's go into the control panel and let's find our wheel suspensions. So we have all of our Nomad wheels and we'll just hit add wheel. And now all of our wheels will add. Well it looks like I hadn't fully retracted that piston. Alright cool. So I think that means that everything is now done. Alright well let me go away and quickly build up these wheels and once they're done then I think we can go from there. Alright cool. Well that's the last wheel done and that pretty much concludes me building this thing. So now what I need to do is kind of lower these wheels so that they're touching the ground and then I can kind of release this thing from its prison. So what I'll do is I will jump into the cockpit and in the cockpit I should have the wheel suspension height. Uh, which I don't. Alright, I want to increase the height and decrease the height. So, increase and decrease. So, I think what I want to do now is raise it a bit. So, let's just see where we're at. Alright. I'm going to have to go outside and just have a look. I can't see much of anything from there. So are these actually touching the floor? Not really. Alright, well. Hopefully that'll be enough where it kind of doesn't matter. So let me just... So this is going to be the last kind of block that I need to grind down. So I'm going to grind this down so it's almost nothing. I'll do the same for this one. I'll do the same for this one. So that hopefully I can grind these three blocks really quickly. So. Alright. So how are we looking? Alright, I think we're looking pretty good. Except kind of released it earlier than what I should have because now I'm not exactly sure if the projection is actually complete. Alright, well let me just kind of rejoin this. Yep. Let's go to remote access terminal. Let's find our projector. And let's make sure that everything is done. So, just graded catwalks and a Gatling turret. Alright, well, before I release this thing from its prison, maybe it might be a good idea to replace them. So, I need to do a bunch of catwalks. You might be wondering, well, why when I cut this thing down um, from the floor, why didn't it actually drop to the ground? And that's because at the moment it is considered a station. So it would literally just float in midair until I basically, um, yeah, fix that. So 
where are our graded catwalks? Here they are. So now I kind of need to weld these up. Right. Now, that should be all of the stuff done. Let's just go back into the projector and just have a look. So, projector, Gatling turret, armor blocks, zero. So, yeah. All we have to do is those four Gatling turrets, which is fine. Right, so I think I'm just going to get rid of these wind turbines. Now the reason why I kind of want to do it this way and not just weld them up later is because, you know, I kind of want to do them as part of the blueprint so that I... I get all the settings from the blueprint otherwise you know I'd have to set all the settings again and all that sort of stuff so well, let's quickly weld all of these up all right finally it is done awesome now obviously I need to build the lift on the bottom there but yeah I mean apart from that everything is done fantastic all right, so let's release this thing from its prison. And then now I should be able to convert this to a ship. And hopefully we don't meet claim. So, but maybe before I do this, I'll just quickly save the game. All right, well, the game is saved. Now let's convert this to a ship fantastic right, let's put the parking brake on let's jump outside and let's get rid of that big pole that's sitting in our way alright fantastic everything is done that's awesome and you can see that the thing is drawing in air and filling all the O2 tanks. And yeah, so this thing is now going to pressurize itself. So that is absolutely awesome. Cool. Okay, so I think now what I need to do is kind of figure out how I'm going to charge this thing. So I have a little bit of an idea. Now, Unfortunately, what I probably should have done was leave this thing connected to kind of like um, the base so that I could use all of the existing stuff that I have in the base, like, you know, the wind turbines to charge the batteries. But there is one way that I can kind of get around this. So let me just kind of move this ship out the way. And basically my plan is to kind of drive this thing out of the garage and then place a landing gear on the bottom of the rover and then basically locking it to the ground and then from there what I can do is I can actually convert that to back into a station and then at that point I can weld on some wind turbines and then that'll kind of make it a station and that will be enough to charge the batteries so let's jump into the rover here and let's take the handbrake off and let's drive this thing forward so we'll drive it forward so let me just change my view here so I can see what I'm doing yeah so I'll move it forward a little bit and I think that should be far enough so it's just kind of out of the garage and what I'll do is put the handbrake back on and then I'll raise the suspension as high as I can go so let's go as high as I can here let's exit out of this and then let's go to the cargo container and withdraw the components for at least one landing gear so let's put all them in um, where is my landing gear there it is so withdraw all the components for that and then what I'll do is I'll withdraw the components for at least one wind turbine just so I can see if this works so we'll do that all right well that's close enough I think that's almost enough components for three wind turbines 
So, let's try and build a landing gear here. There it is. And let's try and build one there. To quickly weld this up. I think it's actually backwards. Oh no, it's the right way around. Alright, cool. So when it's green, that means that it's locked down. So that's awesome. Alright, now what I can do is I can jump into the cockpit and I can then convert this grid back into a station. So let's go into the I menu, into info, and let's convert to a station. Awesome. So nothing's blown up, which is good. Alright, now let's go to the roof. I'll actually go through the rover this time. Let's go on out to the roof. I love these automatic doors. I really need to do that throughout the rest of the base, but yeah, I guess we'll get there eventually. Alright, so let's select a wind turbine and let's place one down on the front. Place another one down here. Place another one. No, can't place one there. Got to place it probably there. Actually, yeah, place it there. And now when I weld this up, it should start spinning and then that should allow me to charge the batteries. Cool. Alright, well, I'm going to weld both of these up. It's not an ideal solution, but it'll kind of do for now. Another solution would be to go and pillage that wreck that's over there, and then from there I can basically, yeah, see if there is any uranium lying around, because this rover does have a couple of reactors. Um, but I think I'm likely to run out of charge in the rover before I actually find any um, magnesium which ultimately I need magnesium to build myself some ammo to take out that you know that one single turret that's guarding that wreck and then you know I can kind of rob it for all its resources but at the moment I just have no way of defending myself so that's just gonna have to stay there for the moment so yeah um, and one other thing I want to do is turn off the welders for the weld ball awesome now, I could actually grind this away and just connect it to the base, which is, you know, the entire purpose of this whole docking thing. But I think I may actually end up using this printer to print a hydrogen ship later on. So I might just leave that line around for a little bit. All right, guys. Well, that's probably going to be the end of the episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed episode 13 of Wasteland Survival, and I hope to see you in episode 14 of Wasteland Survival. So, if you like this content, then definitely consider leaving us a like, and definitely consider subscribing so that you don't miss any more episodes. Thanks guys, and I will see you next time.